you know, gastric cancer, unfortunately, has a bad rap. It has it's a very aggressive um, pathology in general. Um, what we know is that when it's localized um, and it's early stage, patients do better. And obviously, when we get later stage disease, patients do worse. The current management of um, early stage gastric cancer, meaning T1 and no nodes based on endoscopic ultrasound, is still surgery up front. Patients with T2 or greater or nodal disease present on EUS, we um, offer them perioperative chemotherapy up front, followed by surgical intervention, um, and then followed by adjuvant chemotherapy on the back end. So the majority of patients present with more advanced disease. So we it's rare that we end up being able to do surgery up front um, without some perioperative chemo, but uh, the most of our patients do undergo um, a few months of chemotherapy followed by surgery, followed by more chemotherapy, as long as they don't have some major morbidity. Um, I would say for gastric cancer, there's a lot of emerging data for um, molecular studies like testing MSI status in gastric cancer as is being tested in all GI malignancies at this point because patients with MSI high disease are responding better to immunotherapy. Um, and so we're trying to get make sure that all patients with a diagnosis of gastric cancer do get that MSI status checked um, on the biopsy because it may improve overall outcomes. I recently had a patient with an MSI high gastric cancer who had an um, almost complete response to immunotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting. So something that's emerging now is um, more immunotherapy for gastric cancer. I think in terms of um, the role of um, uh, HIPEC for gastric cancer, that's also still hotly debated. Um, there are some clinical trials now looking at um, repeat laparoscopic HIPEC for patients with peritoneal disease from gastric cancer that are showing some um, better outcomes for patients with metastatic disease. So there are some, at least some promising results from, from that standpoint as well in terms of treatment of metastatic gastric cancer. Um, we just need more uh, data to support uh, support that. Um, in terms of minimally invasive approaches to gastric cancer, it's becoming more of a um, mainstream. So uh, many surgeons are offering laparoscopic or robotic techniques for um, gastrectomies. And I there's been shown to be no survival difference between open and uh, minimally invasive approaches in terms of oncologic benefits. So most surgeons who are trained um, minimally invasively are now offering that, which is providing a shorter hospital stay and patients are, are um, benefiting from, from that, uh, I think, more, more often now. Um, in terms of GE junction cancers, you know, the frame of thought, really, there isn't too much that's drastically changing in the field. I think the management of GE junction cancers really depends on the location of the tumor. So if it's, um, you know, a C1 or 2, which is above the GE junction or involving it, um, most of those patients do end up seeing thoracic surgeons because it, it does involve esophagectomy. Whereas below the GE junction or proximal gastric cancer, most of them are seeing surgical oncologists who recommend either total gastrectomy versus proximal gastrectomy. So that is something that is emerging now is trying to limit the extent of resection um, because we know that patients who undergo total gastrectomies do have a higher morbidity um, related to the anastomosis between the esophagus and the jejunum. So uh, many are employing a proximal gastrectomy where you don't have that um, esophago jejunostomy anastomosis. You have uh, esophago uh, gastro gastrostomy connection, and that has a lower risk of leaking. So that is also something that's emerging. Um, many Eastern studies are, are promoting that. We're still kind of in the beginning phases of, of that treatment. 